Gisborne is in the northwestern corner of Poverty Bay, on the eastern side of the North Island of New Zealand, and is open to bad weather from the south. Jody F Millennium is a 25,500 ton dead weight bolt carrier, which on the 6th of February 2002 was berthed in Gisborne Harbour, loading a cargo of 25,000 tons of logs for the Far East. During the afternoon and into the evening, the weather freshened from the south and heavy surge was felt in the harbour. At about 2100, the vessel was forced to leave harbour, but struck bottom whilst negotiating the exit channel, damaged its steering gear and was swept round onto Waikanae Beach. The port tugs were mobilised and attempted to reach the vessel, but were unable to approach due to the very rough sea conditions. Next morning, the vessel could be seen hard aground, but yawing in the rough seas. This is the new landmark that has Gisborne residents flocking to the beachfront. The Maritime Safety Authority National Plan to Combat Oil Pollution was put into action. We are amassing quite a lot of equipment in the region. Uh, we're bringing, those from, uh, bringing that equipment from other regions and, in, and our own centre at Auckland. Uh, we have our planning staff and our operations staff in the Incident Command Centre at the moment who are drawing up uh, plans should there be an oil spill. A salvage team from United Salvage arrived on the evening of the 7th but was unable to board until the next morning. Oil leakage became evident shortly thereafter. On board, the salvage master had organised the deployment of pumps and hoses to transfer fuel from damaged tanks to stop the leakage. Whilst on shore, booms were deployed as a precaution. He was also developing a salvage plan which involved the use of barges and helicopters to lighten the vessel by offloading log cargo and the use of tugs supplemented by ground tackle to pull the casualty off the strand. Ashore, a Lloyd standard form of salvage agreement had been agreed with the casualty's owners. Waikanae Beach is a popular holiday and surfing beach. I'm standing on Waikanae Beach and already you can smell the diesel and oil. This is one of Gisborne's most popular beaches and once that fuel reaches the shoreline, this beach is in for a major environmental cleanup. Last night, these were the signs of the oil spillage, signs that said houses along the beach were being evacuated. The smell of the oil fumes had become so overpowering, people were asked to leave their homes and their motels. Due to oil polluted spray and the smell, evacuation facilities were offered to the residents of beachside homes. Late last night, residents living close to the beachfront were advised to evacuate their homes, especially older people with respiratory problems. Special chemicals were sprayed over the oil slicks from a helicopter to disperse the oil into the water column. The first of many press conferences was held. The oil is contained in a series of bunker tanks which are referred to as double bottom tanks. Number three double bottom tanks, number two port and starboard and number one port and starboard. We understand that number three uh, centre tank, which is a fuel oil tank, is, has been damaged uh, as part of the grounding and that's where the oil is, uh, is released at the moment or coming from. What we're intending to do is actually try to uh, take a suction from the top of the tank, transfer over the top into a, um, into a wing ballast tank which is empty at the moment, therefore, <coughs> thereby reducing as much as possible the amount of oil in that tank. Although the salvage team is successful in stopping the leakage, some heavy oil reaches the shore and has to be cleaned up. The beach also has to be cleaned up. Cleaning up Gisborne's Waikanae Beach was the top priority today. These workers started at dawn, they'll continue through till dusk, scooping up tons and tons of sticky fuel oil. Meanwhile, the salvage tug Pacific Chieftain arrives from New Plymouth and berths. Inflatable barges are assembled and lowered into the water to be towed out to the Jody to receive fuel oil from the ruptured double bottom fuel tanks. A hydrographic survey was carried out to plot the seabed around the casualty, which as suspected was found to be sitting in a trench 
with a build-up of a bar of sandy mud to seaward. There she goes, there's the hollow, right by the stern, and then here's the sand which is piled up on the uh, leeward side there. Heavy chain and anchors for ground tackle arrives. Pacific Chieftain's tow wire is prepared for connecting up to the casualty. Floats are connected to the wire to keep it clear of obstructions on the seabed. Inspection of the steering gear reveals damage and leakage through the pallister bearing. Well, do you want to drop back to 12 on edge and then suck up on the wire, huh? Pacific Chieftain's connection to the bar is completed. 100 tonnes of fuel oil has been pumped into one of the inflatable barges which returns to port to discharge. The Adsteam managed tug CETO 22 together with barge CETO 17 arrives from Picton. Heavy Yokohama fenders are deployed to protect the barge during log discharging operations alongside the casualty. More heavy equipment arrives and is heli lifted to the ship. Seato 22 is connected up to Jody. Heavy equipment arrives from the United Salvage Store in Brisbane. Pumping equipment, sets of ground tackle and wires and other heavy equipment totalling some 30 tonnes has been air freighted by 747 to Auckland and on by road to Gisborne. Just in the last uh, half an hour, it's now uh, 15, 17 hours. Uh, this, is, this has lifted some 20 millimetres. The cracks in the, in the housing have come out another uh, uh, five, six millimetres. The idea of the vents, what we've done here is we've actually taken the normal vent out of the tank and we've fitted an air pressure gauge and an airline and what we do is we pump air into the tank which displaces the water out of it. This tank's one that's been damaged obviously from the grounding and that's how we did ballast the tank. We've been rigging connections to blow double bottom tanks to get extra flotation and uh, pumping oil because uh, we don't want oil all over the place and uh, making sure that all the ship's equipment that we need is working, that we can use. This is what's affectionately known as, as the pig and it's basically an air manifold used to distribute air to tanks which have been breached so when the vessel grounded initially uh, a number of tanks underneath the, the ship was uh, damaged and allowing seawater into the vessel. Uh, just to give you some idea we've probably got close to maybe 500, 500 metres of air hose connected at the moment so half a kilometre of, of uh, one and a half inch uh, air, air line there. On board logs are being discharged by helicopter using an ingenious New Zealand invented log clamp. Although slower Helicopter discharge was found to be as cheap as discharge using the barge and less affected by weather. The 13th of February and the weather is deteriorating. Salvage master David Hancock's watches the wind strength, but the helicopters keep flying. Can you ask Grant's uh, 
Bremen, uh, whether this rain's going to affect them, I mean, I'd rather we didn't fly with it wasn't that good. Over. The tugs haul the Jody round into the wind to reduce the windage. Some forward progress is being made, but there is also significant movement down the beach towards a vulnerable sewerage outfall pipe. The casualty has to be ballasted down. In continuing heavy weather the next morning, Pacific Chieftain loses its tow and the smaller tug is unable to prevent Jody being driven back ashore. According to our plotter, we have made some forward headway. I buy that too. And we've also got a bit of a drift, over. Uh, what we're doing, Murray, is we've vented, dropped all, let go all the air buoyancy in number five, starboard double bottom, and four, starboard double bottom. So we've dumped a thousand tonne of buoyancy, and we're flooding in five port starboard topside tanks to about, uh, put two or three hundred tonnes in, to pin her backside down, stop her, over. Okay, copy that. All right. Thanks, Dave. The next day and the salvage team are busy preparing the ground tackle to be laid by Pacific Chieftain. This will provide extra insurance against further bad weather and will assist the tugs in pulling the ship off the strand. Travelling to and from the ship is quicker by air. The ground tackle wires are prepared for connecting the ground tackle to the anchor. Which should be an up-trip. Rigging wires are lifted aboard Pacific Chieftain. On the foredeck of the casualty, preparations are being made for rigging the ground tackle blocks. Pacific Chieftain's tow wire is reconnected. The ground tackle blocks are reeved and tensioned up. sort out the ground tackle fine tuning with using number three star the top side wing tank as the new slot tank. Uh, we are all aware we could fill four star the top side more. We're also aware that the sounding system on this ship leaves things to be desired. Something could go wrong, the ship could list boil over the side. So we are leaving a bigger than normal Howard Smith tank garage. We don't have a Mexican top off, that's what we don't want. The Adsteam salvage tug Kera arrived from Melbourne on the 17th and has been connected up to the casualty with Pacific Chieftain and CETO 22. Uh, Terry Howe casualty. Yes, go ahead. Would you like to give me a little uh, pull, please, if you head your bow to the little island there and just give me about 30 40 percent power, please. Yeah. Uh, Graham from David. Graham. How's she riding, over? Riding fine, here. Yeah. Okay, let's see you for another 25 revs, both. Roger, that'll be 500. Uh, Chief and casualty. Chieftain. Murray, would you like to ease your power a bit? Slack the wire and go out and pick up the anchors over? Yep, will do. Thank you. Uh, Murray, you'll let me know when you get both those anchors up, won't you, over? Certainly will. Thank you. Graham, you're 600 both, aren't you? Not quite yet, 580. Right, just take her up to see, easy, easy. Uh, Kira, casually. Kira? Mm, come 
up, 650, easy, easy, go on. Jack, keep building the 650. Gently, gently. The casualty has improved its heading and moved seawards. As I say, at the midship mark it starts to climb and it maintains all the way along there. So effectively you've got a hump of sand under your port shoulder. We're just 40 minutes before high water now and attempting to refloat with a method that uh, David had planned, swinging about a port and pulling out into Poverty Bay. Unfortunately, sounding short from midships on the port side forward, there's a sandbank, a ridge of sand built up on the port side. Uh, we've got 11 metres of water aft, going down to about 7 metres of water on the port side, and unfortunately, the bow is just unable to swing against that. We don't have enough brute force to pull the vessel over that. So uh, he's now moving the tugs forward and attempting to move the casualty on the present heading of 210, trying to slide her out of the trough that we've presently in. Seto pushing on. Okay, Seto push at flat at 40% power, please. Trevor David. Seto. Okay, let go of the Seto, please. The refloating attempt is terminated. A further hydrographic survey reveals that further lightning is required before the casualty can be pulled over the shallow area. The salvage master orders the barge CETO 17 alongside to receive offloaded log cargo. Discharge of logs commences on the 19th of February. Discharging continues throughout the night with 1,714 tonnes offloaded. The logs are discharged at the main wharf the next morning and taken by truck to a storage area. The discharge is a slow process due to the unsuitability of the assigned berth. On the 21st of February, the more powerful CETO 25 arrives to relieve Pacific Chieftain, which has oil field supply commitments. The barge has returned for another load of logs, but is ranging alongside in the swell conditions. CETO 22, will you need the Turi Howe to help you if you've got to get this barge held alongside, over? Uh, we can push on the ships and hold it there while you arrange some lines. Depends on how big a project it's going to be. This Helicopter discharge of logs continues using three helicopters. Meanwhile, the second barge load of 1,749 tonnes has returned and is being discharged at the wharf. Helicopters are able to offlift logs directly from the ship to the storage area. On the 23rd, with the casualty lined up for refloating, ballast tanks are blown. And a refloating attempt commences with Kera and Sito 25 plus Sito 22, assisted by the two port tugs. However, although some progress is made, the attempt is unsuccessful 
and more logs are discharged that evening and again the next morning in preparation for another refloating attempt. The refloating attempt recommences at 13.45 on the 24th of February. With all the tugs pulling or pushing and the ground tackle tensioned up, some progress is being made. The tugs on full power are stirring up mud and shallow water. Hi, I'm David. Sam? Yeah, the, the lavatory boy is still a little bit in front of you, isn't it? Roger, yeah, still about that 30 metres. Okay, CETO casualty, come around to your port please, CETO. Copy that, back to port. You get much more then, over? Uh, total about 11 metres all up that time, so we just mark the wire again, we'll slake away. Roger. Anyway, it's actually, uh, we're getting a little bit of a lift here, it's gone to 1.71 at the moment, 1.71. Good, 1.71, thank you. Who lost their gear, Kira? Kira lost the gear. Oh, okay. Dick, David. Uh, yes, David. Oh, what have we lost up there, Arthur? I think the stretcher went, mate. Oh, shit. Well, do you want to get a crane over here and clear all the debris out of the way, Arthur? Well, let's just, uh, we'll uh, start even in and we'll see what we come up with. Okay. Uh... CETO 25 looks all right, uh, does it? Oh yeah, that looks good. That looks good, no worries. Okay, because what I propose to do is instead of stuffing around, reconnecting him, leave the uh, CETO 25 up there and we'll really whop it round. Kira can come down on the back and give it hell on the transom just in a pushing mode, over. Yeah, roger, roger. Uh, yeah, well, once uh, we're settled, we'll grab this in now. And then I think we've got to keep shearing it because we've got another five metres towards the, the anchors last time. You really didn't think I was going to stop just because some tuck busted some towing here, did you? No, I knew that, mate. Roger. Okay, uh, sea tow casualty. Tommy. Yes, sir, how much percent are you giving me at the moment, though? Yeah, about 70 at the moment, huh? I'll see you for 85%, please, Captain. Roger. Slowly easing up now. Roger. Uh, Tidderangi from Casualty. Tidderangi. Yes, what I propose to do is when Kira has recovered his gear, he will take your place down the back as the brakes are uh, pushing his tug over. Understood. So, when we get him settled pushing on the stern, then we'll see if we can find a space in the pair of you can push over. Roger that. Yeah, David, Dick. Go ahead. Yeah, we, uh, so far on this, this year we're going a further 12 metres. Over. Right, well, I'm going to take the sea toe across the ground tackle, boys, and see if we can get you some more, over. Roger, roger. Uh, sea toe 25, casualty. Copy. Yes, come slowly back to your starboard, please, Captain. Slowly back to starboard, Roger. Everyone wants to be a hero. Roger, could you come out and run towards us then and just verify across there? And Kira, casualty. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, have we got enough water to come down your uh, port side here? Very gently, slowly, slowly with the echo sound going and see what's there, over. Roger, Roger. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, 1.85, 1.85. Roger, 1.85. Okay, Graham, you're all fast, 1530. 1530, Roger, power's coming up. Yeah, just bring it up to full, over. Gradually up to full. Roger, on the way. The spectators on the foreshore could clearly see the casualty moving forward by a reference to the cliff face in the distance. Please, we're going to ask the pilot vessel to come in and pick up some people to get high water draft. Uh, David, uh, Dick. Yes, Dick. 
we're powering here, we're off, mate. We're going just going lovely. I know that. That's why you, you guys watch that there uh, uh, bloody ground table wire. Yeah, we'll, we'll heave it in and then we'll pay it out as we uh, we keep going. We'll try and lay it along the bottom and not put in a great big heap. Roger, dude. Okay. So I'd reckon that'll be about one, five, five, seven. Roger. Uh, here is the casualty. Yeah. Yeah, we'll want some pretty fancy brakes fairly soon. Okay. Just keep on pushing for now. Yep, we want to try and get her over on the uh, fleet. See you go, go ahead. See you go, ahead. What I want to do is go out the normal exit channel, as in, in leaving that, uh, what do you call it, Togomaru wreck boy on our port side, over. Yeah, copy that and understood. Tootie how just keep ahead of me there, I'm going to need you to get me into the channel. And Tiki Rangi, if you can shorten up and push me, push on the port side at 90 over. Tootie how come broad out on my uh, port quarter, come out 90 degrees please, Cap. Roger. That's better. Keep that power and try and shorten in if you can. To Durangi, come and stir here, please. Durangi, easy pull. Uh, casualty, this is CETO 25. Uh, I'll duck to the southeast of this um, sewage boy ahead of us. Uh, never mind that. The east power of it, yes. Go down towards the Grey Reefer ship. Copy. To Durangi, more stir. Durangi, pull, pull. The casualty is now being towed to the southern end of Poverty Bay, where an underwater inspection of the damage will be carried out by the salvage crew. Today um, was really a continuation of yesterday. We had a situation with, um, we moved about 40 metres um, towards the channel, and uh, consequently today when uh, we picked up, um, the hope was we were moving to nearer the channel and the situation is that when the two tugs, the Kira and the Seato 25 put uh, considerable weight on, uh, the Kira parted her her towing gear so uh, that was recovered as quick as possible and then she went round the stern um, to assist in the pushing operation so the Kira was down aft and the Seato 25 was pulling ahead and uh, she came off around four o'clock yeah, we're very happy. All of you now is very happy. Today was a good day because we came off and, and everybody's happy because we were successful. Uh, it's like all of the, all of the uh, successful jobs like this, you, uh, you worry it away and eventually it, uh, it comes off. It's, uh, it's a pretty good feeling. Well, we don't jump up and down, but let me tell you, we get a good feeling of probably the adrenaline rushes and you can see that all the long hours it just spent. I don't know how many people are on the Gisborne beach but I would rank it in the thousands and uh, it was a it was a real high feeling of euphoria to see it go and uh, you know even after that length of time I mean we'd all been so heavily involved in it and seeing the thing every day on the beach without much movement it's uh, it can be quite um, disappointing but when it actually goes off it's a great feeling yeah. Well, the biggest hurdle we had was the cargo. It's very, it was very dangerous while we still had all the logs on board. Um, everything else was normal. It's just heavy, hard, and long hours. We've got a fairly big hole down in the steering gear where the, uh, um, the rudder support carrier bearing used to uh, have a proper seal or sealing arrangement in it. That's no longer there, it's all smashed. And then in actual fact, the carrier bearing is all torn away. So we're planning to uh, clean everything up and try and reseat the, the carrier bearing um, and ultimately then to make some sort of a, uh, um, a, a temporary sort of seal just to keep the worst of the water out. Now the hard work starts. The program for tomorrow, which our resident genius has already sold, Kira will come 69 at number one starboard. We'll take up a new forerunner from him. 
put it through the towing chain so fairly. You can piss off the stream is gear. You can bring up the what's called C tow, disconnect your shaft, let it go. Next and higher priority, from our safety point of view, the highest priority is get under tow with Kira. From the outsider's point of view and the swanners, get ready for diving. I've seen enough bent tin and mangled shit not to want to go and look at this ship particularly, unless my learned academic friend here really believes I should. And remember that the first 24 hours after they, they refloat, every casualty goes bug shit. The crew, we're afloat, it's all over, wonderful. And it goes to shit us. Yeah, Roger that, that sort of caved in at the bilge. That's the bilge kill, isn't it? Oh, it's torn up. Yeah, I wish you'd been a bit more line. careful, you made a hell of a mess of it. How long did it take you to do that? <laughs> How far does, is the top of the hole from the flat and bottom vertically over? So I, I need to get an idea of how much buoyancy we're losing in that tank. The hole was full. Yeah, well, we've had those tanks all compressed air to try and get a bit of buoyancy out of it. Exactly. Oh, that's nice and shiny. Take your head off and have a walk around. Which way are you looking, Murray? Orientated. I'm looking forward to you now. So you're on the starboard side looking forward, you're now looking inboard, are you? Now looking inboard. So the damage is on the outside of the ballast tank, over? On the outside of whatever tank was it? Oh, well there's a fairly large hole down there, it's about 8 metres long. It's crack and hole, torn steel, uh, leading into a bilge water tank or a, a ballast water tank, I think it is. Um, the rest of the hole, what would it be like swimming over sand dunes? Uh, it's just folded and bent and buckled. It's bent longitudinally and transversely. Uh, trying to estimate how deep a bend is relative to the bend above it when you can only see a metre is really quite difficult. Meanwhile ashore, CTO 25 is being prepared for the recovery of the ground tackle. The tug manoeuvres towards the buoys marking the end of the ground tackle. Winching up the runner wire commences. And the anchor cable is retrieved and locked in the pins for repositioning of the pull. Anchor has now been brought up to stern and secured. CTO 25 returns to port where the anchor is lifted off. After divers complete their inspection of the hull, Jody finally departs Gisborne for Tauranga. Well, after the vessel was refloated and um, secured in uh, Poverty Bay, various works went on to prepare the ship for the tow around to, in this case, Tauranga, the designated port of refuge. We were the designated tow vessel for that, which meant we stayed connected to the bow of the Jody. And when we were finally cleared from Gisborne, we towed the vessel up the coast um, around East Cape following a pre-planned course about 30 miles out, well clear of all dangers and shipping. Well, the Jody um, proved to be, um, shall we say, uh, slightly recalcitrant in that um, her rudder being jammed hard over, she always felt the urge to run hard out to port. We've got two main tasks. 
Firstly, to patch the big hole in number five starboard water ballast tank, which is in the order of eight metres long, varies in width, but at its widest is about one and a half metres. Now that will be patched by a steel patch. The space will then be pumped down and a cement box will be put in place internally to secure that, that tank. Now that's number one, and that's taking quite a long time. There's a lot of welding and a lot of divers time being expended on that. The second thing is the rudder has to be removed for the tow, uh, both a requirement of the uh, Maritime Safety Authority and of the company which is in charge of the towage, of, on towage of the vessel, which is Nippon Salvage. Uh, so it's got to come off. Now it's not easy to get that rudder off. The, uh, normally in a dry dock, they've got specialised equipment to deal with the palm bolts at the top of the rudder. They are absolutely solid we can either burn them off um, or we can burn the, the rudder stock itself and that is the chosen option because the rudder stock is twisted anyway and a new one's got to be made. Uh, we also got to cut off the sole piece at the base of the rudder which is the piece of metal that holds the bottom pintle for the rudder. That's got to be cut off. It will then be swung uh, onto, onto the, uh, the wharf and placed back on board the vessel and the rudder will be used in the repairs. Well, uh, our contract terminates when we uh, tender and have signed the re-delivery certificate which uh, states that the owners have taken the vessel back as it lies safely afloat in a safe port. After that, the paper war starts. We put together our salvage report, which on this one will be voluminous. We put that before um, a learning council in London who will give us an opinion as to the worth of the services, should it go to arbitration. We will then meet with the representative of the owners of the property, in, uh, mainly in Japan, and we will attempt to settle the case. But it can go before an arbitrator, and that would not happen for over a year. Um, and it may be 18 months to two years before you actually get a result out of it. You've got to have deep pockets to be able to conduct an operation such as this. It's always difficult for people like the people at Gisborne Towboat Company, whatever they're called, to be pitchforked in among people like us, salvage people are fairly single-minded. There's this casualty and it is going to be refloated. And people who stand between it and the ultimate end, or what the contract says we have to do, tend to run the risk of standing between a large hungry dog and a barn. Repairs having completed the re-delivery certificate was signed on the 16th of March. Jody F. Millennium under tow of Kera departed Tauranga on the 19th of March, bound for a rendezvous off Rennell Island in the Solomon Islands with the Nippon Salvage Company tug, Siha Maru No. 2. This was accomplished on the 31st of March, after which Kera refuelled from the casualty and departed for her home port of Melbourne, where she arrived on the 8th of April, having been away 59 days and having steamed some 6,100 miles. On behalf of Kira and her crew and United Salvage, take care and we hope to see you again in more pleasant times. Kira, Kira, this is Jody, Captain speaking. Yes, it's time to say goodbye. All the best. Goodbye. Good luck to you. Have a nice going home. Bye bye, Jody. See you again. Jody F. Millennium arrived at Tsune Ishi, Japan, on the 18th of April, and after lengthy repairs, re entered service in late June 2002 under the new and perhaps more optimistic name, Bright Millennium. <laughs>